Hello, everyone. It's the I'm Just a Kid podcast, episode 141. Uh, this week, I have on the very, very wonderful Nick Callis. Hi. So Hi. We, were, we were just talking about how, as a comedian, you need to have multiple skills because I was having a little technical difficulties. Um, do, don't you ever, do you ever wish you started out in like the 80s where all you had to do was your like six spots a night? Yeah. And that's it? And you didn't need more than 15 minutes unless... Right you had already had a career and then you were headlining and then you needed it at 45. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could literally do the same act over and over and over and over and over again. No one would ever know. I think Ray Romano did that. I think he had like a yeah. seven minute set he did for JFL and that was the set he did every single set for like whatever amount of time before he got JFL and then he got a sitcom. So the culture of stand-up back then, obviously because it was so much newer, Yeah lended itself toward your act right like the idea of an act is kind of gone a little bit yeah maybe on show night if you're headlining or if you're going to see someone tape their special right. you're expecting like the show and act right a beginning middle end maybe now but, it's our people go you're at what's your uh, let me see your hour and yeah. even that it's uh it's a hour an hour you know what i mean it's not like yeah. the hour the hour the because that yeah, used to be yeah. like the special even just having an hour it was a, was special yeah whereas now like i think largely due to like podcasting and social media just the bombardment of content it yeah. changed what the content is because now it's like you go see burt kreischer or whoever and i don't know this to be specifically true about him, yeah. but someone of that ilk you see him and they just do an hour of an hour and a half of just comedy yeah. Just, it's sort of vague have comedy. You seen, like, have you seen uh, Chrysler Live? No. Okay. Because I, uh, yeah, I didn't know. I, Maybe never he's seen a terrible live. example, yeah. but I just mean that like a lot of guys who podcast go and do an hour or a special, especially like the second, third, fourth yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. It's just them doing really casual comedy. It's super. <laughs> just, just them doing a set and they tape it. Eh, fuck yeah, it's it's an out hour there. long set. Yeah. It's super conversational. Yeah. And it's nearly inaccessible if you're not already a fan. Right, right. That's absolutely. Yeah, I feel like um, you don't even need to do it. Like, like I think like the the um, before it was like I gotta get an HBO to get a sitcom to get money to get you know make a career. Right. Now it's like if you're a huge podcaster, you have a Patreon that makes you a hundred thousand dollars a month. You have ads, you have sponsorships, and then, or whatever social media is blowing up, and you can tour. It's like, do you need a fucking special? Like, even if Netflix or Comedy Central buys it, you make what? couple hundred grand it's like is that game changing i mean even that is like such a high price tag i i also i'll say this i think it's a good thing i think it's like it can be difficult and frustrating because there's so many paths to rome so to speak that like you can just become you know paralysis by analysis overwhelmed with like how many different things you should be doing yeah but i think that much like raw opportunity or just you know different things you can do it kind of weeds out if you if you stick to it long enough what you should and shouldn't be doing for you personally. Yeah. And then like everybody kind of can succeed, I think, in what they want to do if you focus on one or two things. Yeah. Because I think everybody has a podcast. I've seen so many of my friends start a podcast and then stop a podcast mm-hmm. 30 episodes in and then be like, podcasting doesn't work. And maybe that's true. And I think people like... 30 is actually more than I think most people Yeah, through, it's a yeah. lot. It's a lot of, you know, yeah. you an hour and a half. It's a lot of time. But I think if you know exactly what you want to do and you take some of those opportunities to like experiment yeah. outside of the public, like if you're not posting everything as if it's your big... Hey, this is my new thing. This is my brand. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of just like play around, figure out what you like. Yeah. Then I think like there's so, there's just so much opportunity. Like some yeah. people think they want to be a stand up and then they realize, oh, I just want to make funny TikToks. Right. And that's fine. Yeah. Like, dude, I started doing stand up because I loved stand up and wanted to perform. Yeah. I later realized that what I wanted from stand up was the opportunity to do some things that I can do by acting. Right. And then, you know, I cycled through that and then I took stuff that I liked about acting and performance art and film into stand up. And yeah. then I stopped doing other things on stage that I realized I can just do this elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I stopped I see. Yeah. writing jokes a certain way. So the po- started. You found the perfect, uh, the appropriate outlet. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. not everybody's supposed to be on stage. 
on stage, but also <laughs> some people need I to mean, hear yeah, that for sure. Definitely that. <laughs> but also, some people aren't supposed to be what they thought a comedian is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You, that's a great point. And I think about like um, the '80s. I think everyone that did stand-up comedy was just a hardcore stand-up comic. Right. Now you see people do like if you look at a lineup now on a on a on a, on a show, it's like you got one guy who's a hardcore stand-up. You got a guy who's got a pod, who's a podcaster, yeah. or a girl. Or you got, a, let's say, a girl that's um, a TikToker, mm-hmm. and are you someone that's like those sketches online? It's all sketches, 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 and like they all do stand up, and it kind of annoys me in a way because it's like, you know, I care about stand up. It's like I'm addicted to stand up. I don't do right. stand up for a couple of days. I start freaking out. You know, a lot of my self worth is tied to stand up, which is not yeah. healthy whatsoever. But it's I like have a dangerous issue with that, I think, and I don't. Yeah realize it sorry to cut you off go ahead no 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 no. i'm just that yeah, i think you were jumping on my point which is yeah. yeah like dude there'll be times where um because i'm not currently in a place where i need to do stand-up every night yeah i've been in that place i was in that place for a long time especially in like my first five six years of comedy yeah and then Same. i, yeah. I kind of got to a place where i was like okay i don't need to do it every night and now i'm in a place where i don't realize how much it changes my physiology when i do or don't perform so Mm. maybe i don't have a show for three days and then i'll go and do a show and say i have a great set i'll get off stage so elated so like physically excited and i'll forget i'm like oh i haven't felt that way like that happy yeah in four days and i didn't realize that there's this thing that i do that does do that to me right yeah it's like really hard to recognize that so much of what you love about your life yeah is hiding in this performance yeah and that you either need to do it all the time or should do it less or like just acknowledging what your balance is because like i don't want to be my stage self yeah all the time it's exhausting right yeah do you feel like um because right now i'm actually i'm actually kind of going through something where i was in therapy today and i was kind of talking about how like oh you know i don't get up every day sometimes and sometimes i just hang out with my girlfriend and I feel a little guilty because like, oh, I'm not working hard enough and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, first he's like, he's like, so do you, do you think, you really think that if you're hanging out with her that it's going to make you less busy or m- make you less like um, motivated? Yeah. I'm like, nah, that, like that doesn't make, if you, when, no. the, the way you put it is like, that does, no, of course not. He's like, why can't you just enjoy it? I'm like, I don't know. I just think like, uh, I, you know. Uh, I have the same problem and I think, lately because uh my girlfriend just because of general like life factors yeah you know forgive me for saying anything that might sound prescriptive but no this, please please do this has helped me i've been thinking about it yeah i mean <laughs> dude, it's, I, yeah. we all do a lot yeah for me i found that the idea of like i'm not working hard enough or am i doing enough when you're working on something yeah. when you're performing when you're about to go up when you sit down to write fucking think that way yeah yeah think that way yes and the second you're not fully commit to enjoying yeah and yeah you yeah. have to compartmentalize hard that way because here's what happens if you go and you do a show and you bomb uh that thing that we do to ourselves where you immediately start negative self-talking yourself yeah, yeah as if yeah. to spite yourself into being better somehow yeah like it's gonna come out the i other love that end. like goku thing care. you just did <laughs> you got the ball the fireball you fucking fired it off <laughs> now you know why my stand-up yeah. delay is yeah i also saw your phone case i'm like oh he's doing it he's channeling it <laughs> his hair's about to go blonde and spiky gallic gun yeah um well uh, anyways so the thing is like torturing yourself yeah yeah. penalizing yourself doesn't make you any better actually what it does is it like fortifies this pathology of when i'm not working i'm bad yeah and when i am working i'm good and so i have to be working all the time and the things that make me happy shouldn't make me happy that's crazy it is yeah and he he's just like dude there's someone she's i'm I'm, I'm only saying this because she's in the other room now but like he was telling me, he's like, you have someone that like loves you and like supports you and like cares about like that. Like that is more than what like yeah. a lot of these other comics that I guess whatever get oh, more dude. spots, you know, have, you know. And I get that. Like I'll talk, be talking to a guy that's like really established and uh, not even, I, it's funny because now I think of all the really established comics, like they're all older than us. So they're all like, you know, they're all settled down too. 
But you see someone maybe our age that's like still single and like, you know, doing well. And you talk to them and you're like, oh, how's your girlfriend? And you're like, oh, it's good. Like, oh, man, it's good, man. It's good for you. I'm like, good yeah. for me. You're, you're, you got 100 spots a night. You're headlining everywhere. Fuck. Yeah, but like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I don't want, I want all the things that I want in my life. Yeah. Uh, equally. It's a package deal for me. Like, that's, if I that's could, healthy. And I think everybody should be this way because mm -hmm. here's the thing, dude. Like, Everything that I've been able to accomplish that I set out to accomplish is not what I thought it would be. And it didn't like fulfill me in a way yeah. that I would replace with some valuable life experience. Like, you know, if I could trade the career I want for my girlfriend now, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And that doesn't make me a worse comedian. That's crazy. Like, yeah. dude, if you want to be successful in comedy so much so that you are willing to sacrifice like relationships and just like life yeah i don't think that person who feels that way has the right balance because here's the thing dude they're like, usually crazy people like they're usually also, really depressed like crazy that level people, of yeah. like lack of mental health and lack of self-awareness yeah. lends itself to other flaws in what you do i believe that like completely and dude i'm someone who if my girlfriend's like, hey, our it's our wedding night, and I'm like, yeah, but they just asked me to do a 9.30 at the cellar, and there's a good chance I'll follow Chappelle. Yeah, I'm moving our fucking wedding. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Like, <laughs> I, I'm i pretty much yeah. as, you know, conflicted about all that stuff. Yeah. But it thinking that way only makes it worse because the way you think and the way you behave are different things, and you don't need to think like a psycho to yeah. behave in a way that's, like, dedicated. I think you made a good point, too, about, like, the things that you end up getting are the things that end up helping your career. For, it's, it's, thing, you just never, it's always unplanned. It's always unexpected. Right. All these TV shows, like... I, I'm not saying I'm not here being like I've done all, all these TV shows, but it's like every TV appearance I've ever done. I it, it wasn't like I started comedy I'm like I'm gonna be on FBI on CBS. Well, I'm gonna do that. Sh it's like just I audition and I'm fucking pretty much like I I do my best. But I've given up. I'm gonna get anything at this point because there's so many right. that you don't get. And something I'm call hey, you can do this. And you're like oh, okay, you do it. And it's like it may it may change. It may not. It's like. But it's never planned, you know? I never was like, oh, I'm going to go do that show in that year. It's just kind of like, even at like um, the clubs, you perform and then someone sees you and they may want to help you out. It's, it's right. yeah. Well, the other thing too is like, there's people in comedy and it's usually the guys. The dudes. Who, I don't even mean gender wise. Sorry. Mm. Just, it's usually the people sorry. Yeah. that are um, a step below you so to speak yeah. in like the invisible hierarchy yeah. who see the credits that you have mm -hmm. and then ascribe like a lot of value to that and then like ask you to do their show because of that in yeah, my opinion the truth yeah. is like uh anybody who's looking at me and books me because like i did a part in a movie or am play at this comedy club that is really aesthetic and I could come to your show yeah. and bomb harder than a guy who's never done comedy before. Like, because you're gonna be usually. I mean, I don't know about you, but like these big guys that they, you know, I, cause I see it all the time. It's like no, like new comics booking name comics on their show, and they come up and they they just work on new shit the whole time. You know? Yeah, but even like, like besides what being in that place in your career does to your general like yeah workflow, because that that guy that big comic might be saving his a material show for later that night. Maybe yeah. he's working stuff out on sure. a 7.30 bar show, whatever. Yeah. What I really mean is that, like, you, can, you can't really use career things as an indicator of what someone does or is like on stage because we all know that, like, so much of building a career in this is fucking luck. It's like, yeah. did you fit the way that character looks on the page with the face you walked into the room with, and are yeah. you capable of acting well enough that this is going to make the casting director happy? Yeah. That has nothing to do with your intrinsic talent or value. Like, yeah, they're yeah. not looking at, oh, how is this going to make James Camacho's career develop? Like, nobody right. cares. Or how about can we make them work shit. for us? Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, it's all. It's fucking silly to like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, very, it's a lot of like, you know, I, I always tell people this with, you know, the commercial bookings. It's like, you go in there, you do the best job you can, but one, it's like you got to fit the look of not just the casting director, but then they got to pass it on to the whatever company, right. their HR and all this shit. And like they have to like see like their vision too. So everything has to, you basically have to jump through all these hoops, 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 hoops. Yeah. And it's really, I think the first hoop is just being good enough on camera 
And then everything else has nothing to do with talent after that. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And it's also like, you know, is what you really want to do, is your goal to have a career in comedy, which is such a vague nexus. It is very vague, yeah. It was your goal, and not you, but the royal you, to like, is your goal to have a career by any means necessary? Because mine is not. Mm. Like, you know, I have done tons of commercial auditions. Uh, I've auditioned for so many different types of shows and stuff like that. Yeah. But now I'm like narrowing my focus because, look, if someone could hand me um, a legal document that says, if you do this, you'll get to do this. Yeah. Then like, okay, sure, I'll take a crack at it. Yeah. No one's going to give you that guarantee. No. And I believe that the things I want to do will probably come from trying to do those things. Yeah. As opposed to like some weird, wild goose chase. And it might happen that way. Yeah. But I only got so many years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know I know. What I mean, like, that's nothing, too. It's like, it'd be great if we had like all the time in the world or till we're dead to like figure out, but like, you know how ages this fucking game is you know I don't even mean in terms of like age oh. in the industry yeah i just mean like i'm going to die at some point oh so you do mean life for, yeah yeah yeah. i'm yeah. gonna spend you know i spent a, i spent like better part of a year when yeah. it was all said and done on yeah. a half an hour short film this was like uh, must have been like 2016 or something like nice. that nice and uh, i had a blast making it mm-hmm. eventually it became like cumbersome and tedious uh sure. for like post-production yeah but by and large it was really fun positive experience that like taught me so much that i use now yeah and the like ultimate version of the artist that i'm trying to be needs that experience yeah of course and it, it, i don't know if i skipped an audition to do it or i skipped a spot to do it but like whatever it is that it took for me to make that yeah is what i wanted yeah you know and like that's that to me is more valuable than like if i was on a swiffer commercial and had an extra eight thousand dollars for right. four years or whatever you know? yeah well you're learning a lot of different skills you know that 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 could help you uh, in the future as opposed to just you know swift for commercial you're just sweeping you're just getting told what to do by the director you know? yeah and i'm not even knocking because a lot of people want to do comedy yeah for money acknowledgement and pussy that's a real thing and money acknowledgement pussy the map the map yeah <laughs> what's your map dude? <laughs> nicely done how's your math score um, and look i think there's some version of those three things is important to everyone yeah. even non-performers on some level to varying degrees because that's human you can't be unaffected by those triggers right but yeah you do have to figure out why you're doing what you're doing because you dude if you're here's the thing if you found if you were talking to a comic and they were like, oh, I'm doing this set, dude, and I crush, and this like hot chick came up to me afterwards, and she like totally wanted to hook up, and like all my boys from high school were like, you're the man, Shit, and they dude. paid me like a thousand dollars. Like that's all dope. Yeah. But imagine if like a fucking fireman said it to you. Like if he was like, dude, I ran into this building and I saved this old woman's life, and then yeah. I fucked a chick, and then I got money. Like you'd be like, you'd dude, be like, you're a sociopath. That's insane. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, you would look. Yeah, you're right. You're, oh Jesus, that's a good point. Even if they're like the best firefighter in the world, they're like I've saved all these lives, blah blah blah, and he's just like crushing puss on the side. Yeah, like you'd dude, be like, hey, you'd be like, hey, like, oh, you're kind of a scumbag. I don't really know if I want to watch his fires. Yeah. So speaking of kind of like doing your own uh, projects, um, you're on this uh, new social media app right yeah, uh, what's, what's it called it's called rizzle rizzle i feel like i could say like sizzle rizzle it, i could say any word right like, it's on <laughs> rizzle's good on i Tilly. believe it is it rizzle it's rizzle yeah i guess yeah, yeah. real sizzle rizzle is that that's gotta there, be what it is these days if you make two syllables that's an app if yeah you go, bubble the bubble <laughs> is a, seal seal would have worked too uh-huh. sizzle and real um but you're doing well on there i think um yeah man it's cool. hundred thousand hundreds and thousands of uh followers Good amount of uh, blah, 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 blah. what's the what's the other thing that's important views, views. yeah so um well, like how did you is do you think this is the new TikTok because because right now it's TikTok Instagram Twitter Facebook I um, feel like YouTube is that is this gonna be another one that we're gonna have to worry about <laughs> going viral on soon uh may, may, maybe yeah maybe it could be that's their plan um, sure right like all these places have. A plan. It definitely could be. I think, like, as far as the analytics go, I know that they have like a user base of like eight million people right now. The app was created in India, so most of their user base is in India. And then oh, they got- I should get on there. I have all these jokes about her. And she's half Indian, dude. I would fucking crush on there. 
<laughs> you should. <yeah. laughs> I'm gonna make my account tonight. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, the analytics so yeah, are good. They, yeah, they like reached out to like me and comedians like me, I guess, to help develop a user base in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I started putting like sketches and stuff on there, and um, yeah, it, it all did same, well. Same as TikTok, and uh, is it just nine nine by sixteen, yeah, less than a minute? Format, yeah, um, like fifty nine seconds, all that jazz. Right. So what's the what is the difference between them and TikTok, YouTube Shorts? It's it's so pathetic that. It's yeah. all the same thing now. Like every app has kind of transformed into TikTok. I, well, that's the thing. Everyone keeps discovering this. Is yeah. That it's got to be short attention grabbing. Yeah. Uh, low attention span videos. Yeah. And then they do that. And yeah. They go, and it has to fit the format of the phone in your hand. Otherwise, there's something that isn't intuitive about it, and it's ugly. So it has to look this way, and it has to be this length. And then they do that. And, and they shadow they ban it, too. If it's not, like, 9 by whatever, whatever the, uh, nine by yeah. 16, uh, yeah, they just and go, fuck this video. that's of, like, what people are paying attention sure, to. Sure, sure, sure. then what happens is they go, yeah, but we want to expose more content on it for longer periods of time. And they go, okay, now you can do three-minute videos. And, yeah. you know, YouTube did it, and then TikTok did it, and everybody follows the same formula. Of yeah. Like, this is how it goes. This is Vine. And this is what's Vine holding it. Were a minute long and Vines are great. I loved Vine, dude. What was it, like 15 seconds? I think it was six seconds and then it yeah. got longer. I like, thought those are fun. Like, there's something about 15 or six going on to like 15 going on to 30. That's a huge difference, dude. Uh, yeah. There's an art to making something like just like boom, 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 you know? Yeah, well, it shows you the power of filmmaking because, you know, in six seconds, you can put a ton of frames in there. And you yeah. only need one frame to tell a story. Yeah. So, I mean, I used to like Vine just because I would follow, like, stop motion animators on that. Because it was okay. such a perfect, you just. Right. I really loved um King Batch or King Back, yeah. whatever his name. He was, I thought his things were so fucking funny. Yeah, there were a lot of really funny yeah. uh, people on that. He's like, he's like, he's a comedian now. He's on tours doing stand-up. <laughs> stand-up is like, um, it's like a business card now. Yeah. You just go like, oh, well, cool. Like, what's your stand up? Where are you doing stand up? Like, everybody does stand up. Yeah. So Why not? Too. You, if you can sell tickets, you, you, you'd be stupid not to. It's like yeah. mini theaters, basically. Stand up and like public appearance has merged. It's now. that's there's what like, a great point. Yeah. Because you have like, there's just like a girl who has OnlyFans and maybe she has a podcast. She'll do like a stand. You'll be like, she's headlining Levity tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? She has yeah. an hour and it's like, kind of. Yeah. It kind of does. Yeah. It's not and and you know what? I think those people if they try to do stand up, I don't even think they should. I think they should do whatever the fuck like they can literally do whatever it is that I, they do. I kind of I'm coming around on it because yeah. in the moment if I go to a club or whatever and I see that that person's doing it and they can sell 100,000 seats and I can't or whatever, yeah. I'm kind of like good cuz it just it forces you to have to be either better at what you're not doing. Yeah. Or change what you're doing for the better right right like if someone can have a podcast never do stand up and then go like i did a jfl showcase this year mm, yeah and there were two people on my showcase uh i don't i didn't know them and you'll see why yeah um <laughs> because they'd uh they'd never performed comedy live before oh i've heard this but yeah yeah someone else told me there were characters on on yeah, social yeah, media so yes character yeah showcase. and they ate shit i heard well, you know, I don't. I, I, don't <laughs> I wouldn't know say any names, names, so yeah. I can confirm that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, but but uh, if one, and I don't know if they got JFL, they might have gotten JFL. They probably and got if, it. Yeah, if they did. Like, all right, dope. That even though that person's reps weren't on stage. Yeah, they did reps, and they got to where they're gonna go. And at the yeah. end of the day, I think like generally, there's a lot of bullshit out there as far as entertainment goes, but. It can only go so far, yeah. Without yeah. quality, I guess. Without quality, like yeah. you can't really survive exposure. Because here, here's what happens: you go see a movie and it sucks. The first thing you do is walk out of the theater and be like, "Yo, that movie sucked." Text all your friends, "That movie sucked." Right, and you so see who like, directed it, who was in it. And you're like, ah, I'm not yeah, gonna see that guy's things good again. Shit survives. There's yeah. no merit to the schedule of what survives and what explodes and what appeals to people. There's yeah. No, there's no meritocracy in how things unfold. Yeah. But you just have to be, you know, more persistent than we should have to be. But right, you know, we're trying to, dude. We're the ultimate goal in comedy is to become generationally wealthy, telling jokes. Yeah. So Being if silly. it's really hard, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. like it's not comedy's not easy enough. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Like a coal <laughs> miner who, no matter how fucking well he mines coal, yeah. he's never going to be generationally wealthy and yeah. famous. When That's you when you put it that way too, is like, I, I, what are the the percents of you making income? Like like less than one percent, and then every day. You know, I'll get mad like fucking bullshit. I'm like, what? it's like I'm playing the lottery. I can't, if I went to play the lottery and I didn't win the fucking million millions, I'm not gonna be right. throwing a, sh- a piss fit. Right. You know. And, and also, like, and I, and I say this to anyone, myself included: Are you actually the best? Yeah. Are you the best at everything? Then maybe bitch a little bit. But if like you're not even the best on the show that you're on tonight, mm. uh, then like. I mean, go ahead and say that shit to your grandpa. Dude, my grandmother, has. she saw me perform for the first time. Yeah. Uh, like a month ago. In a theater, too. It was like a good opportunity. It was a good, good environment. showing for yes. what I do, right? It wasn't in a bar. It was a good showing. And she still was like, I don't get it. Like, you're going to try to make this a career thing? I'm like, it is a career. It's how I pay my bills. And she doesn't care. Yeah. She, my... My frustrations about our industry mean nothing to a person who didn't have shoes until she was like seventeen. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we we like as a culture do have to like shut up a little bit. Yeah, I think. But also, part of what people like about is that comedy is, is yeah. bitching. Yeah, people it's bitching. want bitching. Yeah, yeah. I dropped some truth bombs here. Can we let's go back to a uh, Rizzle real quick? So, mm. um. How how is it different than the other ones? The apps. Oh, okay. So the primary difference is that like on TikTok you can comment, um, you like like comment whatever. Yeah. You can you can like and you can follow people, but the primary way of engagement is that you if you want to like t- tell someone what you think of their video, you have to make a video of yourself responding. So oh, okay. Everything every response is based in like generating real communication okay cool yeah which is cool because you know uh you go hey guys i was just having this oat milk i think that this is the best oat milk brand someone goes like hey what are you talking about that's the worst oat milk brand so like it does generate conversation right in my experience it might not be the best place for original filmic content because you are inherently asking someone who may not be a creator to create and to voice their opinion through what is ostensibly vlogging is ostensibly yeah. an art form. So yeah. if like, you watch a sketch on TikTok and you're not you, the comedian, you're just some guy, mm. are you compelled enough to make a video of yourself giving a real-time review? My... Takeaway is I don't think most people want to put themselves on camera and share their opinion about like a two minute. <sighs> also, sketch. you don't like we always joke about trolls and stuff. It's like how, hey, I don't want to see these people's Actually, faces. Think, Tra- like oh, well, it, that, it does. In, it, there's a there's an aspect of it that kind of creates a barrier to trolling because you've got to show yourself. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah. I think it protect. But also, do you have people that will comment? Like shitty things to you like uh, through camera. Well, I was doing like little like funny vlog videos on there for a while, and yeah. it, it, I was calling it like my first thought of the day. So yeah. I would just wake up, I'd grab the phone, and I'd be like, I had a dream about this, whatever. And so I'm okay. not wearing a shirt, and I look terrible. Yeah. Uh, and then I'd get a response from someone that's like, put on a shirt. Oh god, you got to see their some. Te- you and it's see just their face. some guy in the Ukraine. Yeah. And like whatever, it's funny, but like <laughs> the uh, my my thinking on Rizzle is that I hope that it succeeds, both because like you know it they're it's good and they're good people and like I've worked with them a ton and mm. I like that obviously, but also there is a there is a world where it could be very successful. But I also think the the biggest difficulty about that app and most new apps yeah. is that you have to create a lifestyle change in your potential user base, right? So right. like if you have an app that is a new way to um, get food delivered to you yeah. or something like that, what you have to do is create behavioral changes in people so that they are they go, I'm hungry. And they go, what could we do? We could get food out of the kitchen, we could go to a restaurant, or we could go on or seamless foodie right whatever, but th- right? but that's that's what you're talking about like, like a behavioral seamless, thing yeah, yeah. like when Let's you're taking a shit you check tiktok you, there has to be a way to make responding in real time to something you just saw yeah. attached to like a behavioral impulse right otherwise people will check it when they check it now can like let's say i'm, I'm late i want to join this and get success quick can i can i re i can i like 
re-upload the stuff I've already put on TikTok? Yeah. Okay. Totally. And if they get views, that's good. But do you get more... Um, is there a creator fund for it? I think they're implementing something that's kind of like Patreon where people can like subscribe. To right. And content. they can pay. So yeah. is there a thing where if people do comment with the, the face, the selfies or whatever, does mm -hmm. that help the, your algorithm more? I guess like, yeah, like a yeah. comment would for, for YouTube. Yeah. I think yeah. what helps most on that app is views. Okay. Views, they get views on that app. Um, uh, and then also like anything else, it's just being on it all the time and like tossing a ton of content into yeah. it, which, yeah. you know, I don't know how much of my, this is another thing that I think about comedy, right? It's like, how much of yourself do you want to share? When I, st I started 12 years ago, when yeah. I started comedy, it was about, okay, my five minute set, I got to perfect that and then I'll, I can put it on YouTube, but that's plan B. I want to give it to this, yeah. you know, booker or whatever it was. And now it's just like, if you're walking down the street and you have a thought about the iced coffee you're holding, yeah. share that 15 second video yeah. because 1100 people might agree yeah. and then that can get you attention and that can get you followers and then that can help you get booked. So like you have to sort of acquiesce to selling any piece of yourself yeah. and like that's not my thing. Yeah, I mean I see some people literally like they take a shit and there's like a whole video about it, you know, or they go they get a new shirt, it's a whole video. People and love it. Yeah, and people love it, and I'm just like, I, I'm not, I can't, I mean, I, I always stress me out. I can't even knock it, because I just, one, I don't have the confidence for that. Yeah, I, same, same, same. I have a... Who would give dog. a shit about my, my shit, <laughs> you know? Dude, it, well, it's that, and then it's also, like, I, I don't, like, I, when I'm ready to perform, when I'm ready to film something, whatever it is, I get a lot of love and excitement. I get, like, really happy, and I feel on cloud nine. There's going to be a zone you got to get into. Yeah, yeah, and that is what enables me to, like, do my craft. Yeah. When I'm, like, crafting and I'm not in a good mood, it's a significantly different product. And I think people who have the ability to be like, look at this cup. This cup's crazy. Yeah. And then people love watching that. Yeah. Like, dude, that's a talent. That's really hard to do. I'm yeah. not that way. I came to doing comedy... Um, both writing and performing it by way of comic book illustration. Like yeah. for t 17 years, that's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote a story for myself to illustrate it. I felt like it was funny. And so I submitted it to some places and then realized, okay, comedy is another avenue I could explore. Yeah. And then whatever, fast forward, I was a comedian. But I came to comedy from a place of like, crafting craft drawing right, right, every little right. thing is important don't yeah. show it till it's finished nowadays it's yeah. like here it is unfinished is even like what people want if something's too yeah. put together that people i think tune out oh even a you know a video will start with like 30 seconds of somebody just like walking you can't hear it well but yeah. then you know it's real so it's more intriguing yeah like, yeah yeah it's just not going yeah. back to your comment yeah if i was in the 80s that was more a culture of perfectionism crafting which yeah i like so yeah yeah well, we just got, I guess it's like, we just got to keep adapting, you know, if you, especially if you want to be successful. I mean, I guess there is some, something to like just doing what you want, but maybe trying to figure out how to make that accessible too. Um, that's a big part of it. Yeah. That's a big part of it because you should, and this is the note that I get from my brothers and my, my friends. That's nice that they, that they give yeah, you notes I, and care. Yeah. I have like, I'm sure you're probably the same way. Like I have a small circle mm -hmm. of people whose opinions I trust, yeah. not because they're filmmakers or they're stand-up comedians, but because the product that I'm selling is me, and they know me yeah, better, than, better anyone. than anyone. So yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I, I film a character, and I want to submit it to some competition or whatever it is, and I send it to my brother. My brother can tell it in a second, hey, you're not connected to your performance here, right. or you're not, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't, some idiot on the internet or some genius on the internet that watches it and goes, <laughs> that's not funny or yeah. that's funny. Yeah. Both of those are useless to me. Yeah. I need somebody who's going to, hey man, you aren't doing what you are capable of. That's yeah. way more. Valuable. You know, sometimes the, when people are trashing you online, it's always the same yeah. fucking point they make over and over again. It's like, you, you I, did you not read the other comment? Like someone said your thing already. So it's kind of like whatever low hanging fruit is what they go after. But right. there's always someone that, doesn't do they they'll say it that that true but blah 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 blah, blah could be blah, 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 and you're like oh fuck you know yeah. like it kind of like changes you're like okay that was that was actually really good like they they know they either have an eye 
Right. Or they've seen every single one of your fucking videos. You yeah, know? there's always there's always a rose in the thorns that knows what they're talking about. Yeah. I think most of the time the reason why people repeat comments is because it's not important if something's been said, it's important that they say it. Because yeah, they want to do it. Their own vindication of their feeling watching your thing. Yeah. But Ugh. the other thing too is like dude, we signed up for that. I am perfectly yeah. fine with the exchange that I've uploaded my thing to the internet and I'm asking for your attention entirely <laughs> unsolicited. Yeah. I just made a sketch about um, a mutant with superpowers and nobody asked me to do it. It's yeah. just my own flight yeah. of fancy. I made it. I put it out there and no one said, hey, can you show me a sketch about that exact topic? Right, right, I just right. foisted it in front of them, right? Yeah. So if, they're, if that hits them on a Tuesday morning when they're feeling... Like, hey, fuck anything that isn't me drinking this smoothie right now. And then they see that and they go, here's what I don't like about this. That's what I signed up for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, at the end of the day, it we are electing to be public figures. Yeah. And people that's part get of it. to have an opinion about it. Right. And that's, but I mean, it's, it's a that's, fair trade. That's part of it. Um, so speaking of like uh, people that are close to you being the only people you uh, trust. Um, your brother and sister. Um, where did you Where did you grow up? I grew up in New Jersey. Oh yeah, what part? Yeah, baby, Bergen County. Bergen County. All right, I'm Middlesex County. That's not nice. far, right? No, Bergen, no. Middlesex. I think you are a little more south and a little more. Yeah. I mean, I'm right next to New York City, so. Right, Bergen. Okay, cool. So, where did you go to high school? Uh, Demarest, New Jersey. Demarest. I think uh, I've heard Northern of that. Valley Demarest. I think I've heard of that. It's like a Monk. Is that by Montclair? We're okay. It's like more north and uh, more north than Montclair. It's like yeah. above, the, almost above New York City, north of New Jersey. Uh, we're like right parallel. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um. So, how was that? Uh, I mean, it was largely great, right? I think, like, I'm sure, like everyone else, my high school high school experience was like marred with personal inadequacies and like yeah desperate attempts to find myself and my like purpose yeah 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 um i discovered doing stand-up in high school oh okay which i think saved me because all my friends um were very smart like my two closest friends in high school um very smart going to great schools knew what they wanted to do pretty much their whole lives because yeah. they had family and finance or whatever so like their track was kind of laid out for them and yeah. all they had to do was like do well enough to get into you know whatever one of family school. company yeah, yeah exactly yeah um but for me i i would say i spent the first three years of high school trying to be my older brother he was captain okay. of the football team, captain of the basketball team. He was uh, brilliant. Oh like God. he was the man. He was also dreamboat. Like, he he uh, he's, captain of everything. Dude, he is like <laughs> be my captain. Prototypical like hometown hero. I'm sure his experience of being that guy is different from the way I saw it growing up. It always is. But, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. I ask I ask people that are uh, way popular um, than me in high school uh, how they felt about, it, and they're like, I thought everyone hated me. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm I'm sure that's true also. Yes, but, yes. Yeah, a younger me is looking at him and going like, okay, well, this is what I have to be because this is my example of, like, success. Yeah. Um, all the while, I had... Uh, my only obsession ever was to draw comics. I was obsessed with mm -hmm. film and with comics and animation and stuff. And so I had this personality that... And this is intrinsic to me outside of, like, aspirations for a career, but, like, a goofball. Like, loved attention. Yeah. Loved making people laugh. Yeah. Jim Carrey's um, your favorite comic, right? Like he's like a big yeah, inspiration. He yeah, he's the might be my best. dad. I don't think he knows. I mean, if he was your dad, that'd, true, that'd be really cool. <laughs> I would have laid out for you like the finance bros. <laughs> that'd actually be worst case scenario. Can you fucking imagine being dude? Jim, Jim Carrey being your fucking dad? Dude, I heard LeBron's be very kids stressful. Yeah. play basketball. Yeah. Why? Do anything else. Do anything yeah. else. That, I kind of, I kind of have that fantasy though. I wish I grew up in like a theater family. So it's just like, cause, but you never know. Maybe I, if I grew up in a theater family, I would not have wanted to do theater myself. But I just yeah. think that like, oh, you, you guys have been made like from a young age. It's theater is good right. and like, go, taking acting classes. Yeah. You have those examples. Yeah. You know, there, there's pros and cons. There, there may be more. Pro, I think it's case by case. Gotta be pros. More pros. 
I think so. Yeah. But at the same time, there, there's definitely more pros in that. Like you look at the industry and you see, oh, this person is this person's kid. Yes, yes. However, for me, I think it would have been a con, as you said, because my favorite thing about any art form and the ones that I like participate in and love is that I discovered them yeah. entirely by myself. Like there was, right. there was no one saying you should do this. Yeah. Try, try like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was important for me. I think that's why I kept going. Right, right, right. Okay. So you, 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 you want to be your brother, do all this stuff. So you wanted yeah. to play. So you, you were obsessed with comics. I kind of feel like I know where this is going. So you're obsessed with comics. You want to be a goofball. But your brother's not that. Your brother is fucking... I mean, he's he's a goofball. He was every good thing, right? He was like the funniest dude in school. He was like the toughest dude in school. Right. Like he's, he's, he's a just per- a star. He's, he's, per- yeah. he's, he's probably valedictorian, prom king, I bet, all that yeah. stuff too. Just just perfect, dating the hottest girls. Um, that was also true. My brother but- had a slew of unbelievably hot girlfriends <laughs> that as a kid, I'm like, I mean, dude. Who is this <laughs> guy? Um, hope he's my dad. Um, so... Um, how like what kind of things were, did you just copy exactly what he did? Yeah, like I played yeah. every sport that he played. Did you um, like playing those sports, or you yeah. you're like I have to do them because he's. Doing I them. am not for sports. You, um, I mean, you're athletic. You're thanks. you're athletic. Yeah, I, I working out is like that's very personal to me, and I love it. I do it constantly. Yeah, yeah. but like sports, the game of sports, like I don't have the mentality. Mm. I I pursue comedy and art like an athlete, but yes. as far as sports go. It was it would destroy me. Like I couldn't play without being the end of the world. I was like overly competitive. I took everything super personally, right, and right. I wasn't that good at sports. Right. Very athletic, but I'm not good at sport. It takes a mentality. It's, it's it takes different. a focus. It's it takes a, a yeah. compartmentalizing. Like yeah. I wasn't built for that, and I was hyper aware. So like all of my inadequacies were really difficult for me to deal with. Um, like progress wouldn't come quickly enough. And I was trying to compete with a dude who was so one naturally gifted to worked harder than my brother was not even a big dude. Yeah. He's two inches shorter than me and I'm six foot. Yeah. So, I mean, he had no business dunking in high school, but could, but he's like, natural. He's got the natural gift. Yeah. And it's be- what I, what yeah. I didn't realize is that the thing that he had beyond a natural gift was passion. And my passions yeah. were for Spider Man and for Jim Carrey. Yeah. So that's what I should have been doing. Yeah, that's the X factor there. Right? The the will, the like the needing of like uh like I need to do comedy. So right. that's why I don't even like, you know, with these influencers, whoever the fuck do comedy, they don't really threaten me because I'm just like it, dude, I, I if I don't do comedy, yeah. it's like I'm gonna start falling apart like yeah. i'm gonna die and yeah. you don't like so you, you you don't need this you know that's the thing it's so, like it's yeah. your thing yes yes it's yes. not about it also to me i've said this before but to me it's a coincidence that anybody else does stand up because if stand up as an industry didn't exist and yeah. it was an art form that no one had ever heard of ever i would be doing some version of it because yes. like i discovered it in myself when i was yeah. in high school and like I didn't realize that you could be a comedian. Mm. I would just hold court with my friends and I could feel that there was something different about when I got the mic, so to speak. And yeah. when like, a friend was telling a story and you know, you'd hear people be like, Oh, you should be a comedian. Blah, blah, blah. And then at some point in high school, after I quit playing every, cause I, I played football and I couldn't hack it. I played basketball. I couldn't hack it. Right. Um, I, I got, I tried out for the uh, basketball team freshman year. I got cut yeah. the first day of tryouts. Jesus. I came back crying yeah. on the second day and said, please let me try out again. The coach let me. He said, you did an awesome job. You still didn't make it. Oh. I threw a desk at him. Oh, what? And then uh, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll play lacrosse or whatever. That's uh, it. You threw lacrosse. the desk. I'm going to go play lacrosse. I was like, Fuck you. And you don't know. And, yeah. and he was like, you're not going to know. Dude. Sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You so, threw a desk at him. No charges pressed? Nothing? No, nah, nothing happened. But <laughs> it, it, it didn't hit him. But. God bless you. <laughs> no, but that's the level of like importance that I ascribe to all those things. Yeah. Because I wanted them to be important to me because yeah. that's what I thought. I was supposed to be right. You trick yourself. You kind of brainwash yourself in a way. Yeah, And that's, that's the, that's the pathology that I have. And now I like to think that it works in my benefit because I use it. Okay. I got to do X type of workouts over X type of days in order to, you know, 
develop the body that I'm trying. And then the same thing with, con- okay, if I have X days until this headlining show, I've got to do X, X sets. Amount of sets. And, and yes. like I work backwards from things. But at the time, all I was trying to do was like, I guess, be somebody other people would like. And it wasn't until I was like, all right, I'm not playing sports anymore. I'm drawing comics. I'm writing stuff. I'm going to make short films. Yeah. That suddenly, like, I think senior year of high school, I, I, in some ways, I've never been happier than that. Because, like, okay. everything was ahead of me. And I was like, oh, I can I can write and I can draw and I can act and I can... Everything I wanted to do, like, became possible right. just because, like, I allowed myself You're to leading try. your own, uh, I guess, uh, destiny in a way. You're, you're yeah. doing your own stuff. You're not... Being like, what's he doing? Oh, I got to do that. You know, uh, I have this, I have a similar thing. It's like my whole high school, I was like, I, I just wanted to be popular yeah. and be cool, fit in, go to every party, be a fucking psychopath with, with drinking, yeah. get in fuck. Remember those stupid Facebook uh, albums? Summer 2020. You just right. get in as many of those as you yeah. can, you know, just doing your fucking, uh, or you're just chugging a Majorska like it's like a savage. I That's all I cared about, right? right. And I'm just like, what are they doing? What are they, where are they going? Where are they going? What's the cool thing? What's the cool thing? What's the cool thing? Uh, we got to go tailgate. We got to rip our fucking sleeves off. We look right. like douchebags. Show our fucking, uh, your obliques. And then eventually, you know, not, like this is like sophomore year of college, you know, I'm, I got no direction. And then it's like, I've always had a thing like, my, see, you had a comic books. My whole thing was like, I was so obsessed with like comedy movies. Mm-hmm. Like when um, Judd Apatow was like really starting yeah. out. Those movies are great. Jim Carrey, yeah. amazing. Just, just I would watch them. Like, oh, I want to fucking be in that. I want to do that. And I didn't do shit about it until I had a moment with myself. My parents were like, what are you majoring in? And I'm like, <laughs> sophomore year. And I was like, I've always still. Ha- and I started in a session with movie and theater and all that shit. So I just started just sign up for theater, English writing classes. Yeah. And yeah, it, it it was like I stopped. I was, it was, I stopped drinking. I was so focused and like, I had this like crazy, uh, euphoria, but also like, I found like the light almost, Yeah. you know, where I was like, Oh, totally. this is, this is like, I'm not, I'm finally, I'm, I'm not doing anything for any other reason, just for self uh, enjoyment right. and self fulfillment, right. you know? And like, dude, my grades were so bad. Then it went from AAA and granted there were English and theater classes. So they're kind of bullshit classes, but I cared, you know, yeah. like I was studying and I was interested in what I was doing and I wanted to, to get better. And, uh, that, it was kind of similar to what you're yeah. saying. It's like you're not totally. a f- follower anymore in F- a way. Figuring yeah. out like your thing, yeah, is I think aside from like food and water and shelter and sleep and safety is like the singular most important thing in a human existence. And like, yeah, that's the it's the thing that I'm interested in talking to other people about. Like when you have to meet a person, I'm immediately I'm like, what's your what, are your, what is your why, passion? Why are you alive? Because that's a choice. <laughs> What's your purpose on right? earth? It's First a, thing you say. <laughs> it's not a choice to be come alive, but yeah. it's a choice to stay alive. To, yeah. yeah. To we all need our purpose. Why are we degree. here? What are we doing? We can't just be around yeah. here and picking berries off the floor, no, fucking each other. It's freeing. And yeah. then once you figure that out, then you're depressed forever because you realize, oh, it's not what I thought it was. But that's a better place to be in. Well, it is the choices. Do you, but like, I think we are enlightened in a way. I make it sound like we're just, we're better than everyone, but like, we, we kind of have this thing that's ours, but it's like, I think so many people still that I know in my age group, even people I went to school with, even my friends, they're like, oh, I want to make a lot of money or, you know, they're doing that and that job or they're having kids there and then, da, 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 da. And these are like grown people, you know, mm-hmm. like, and it kind of seems like they're still doing like, oh, I got to have kids now. I got to get a house now. Like, look at them. She's doing that. She's doing that. You know, like, I don't think any, like, and then I used to think like they, they're they not being honest with themselves. They haven't found a thing that they care about. <sighs> Fucking stupid. I don't, I think some people just don't have that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think what, you know, what you want your whole life to look like is like very specific, right? So much, like, I think there's a general, like family and two kids white picket fence da, da, da. like there's a general thing that's like sold to us yeah. as like an image of happiness yeah and fulfillment and like that's great i think it by and large it's true that having a family and prosperity like are gonna make you happy i want that yeah who doesn't mm. but also if you don't that's fine yes yes and it is. they're fine. you know like they're that's I, I think i want i used to want not want a family and stuff until i had 
the career I wanted. And now Ooh. I want the career that I want so that I can have a family. Ooh. Like I want to be able to provide for the, for the family I don't have yet. Yeah. So now I'm like holding a gun to, uh, to comedy's head and going like, let's figure this out so yeah. that I can make my life what I want it to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like you fulfilled one part of your life. Now you have to yeah, because get the you other. Can't, yeah. You can't postpone your own happiness by telling yourself, okay, well, if I don't get an hour on Comedy Central, then I'm not going to get married. And I do. Mm, there are people that, yeah. I do that. Like, we all do, right? Yeah. You want things to fill the timeline that you imagine because it's convenient for you. Nobody else, the universe itself, like doesn't care about that. They That's laugh crazy. at your plans. The universe yeah, laughs man. at your plans. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. You just gotta like try your best, roll the dice, and then see like, okay, what? Yeah, is gonna come back. But my, like, yeah, one of my biggest uh, lines in life. I tell her this. I tell people this. Like, just do whatever helps you sleep at night. And meaning, just like, yeah. don't ever go to bed like angry or jaded or like, oh, I wish I'd done that. But, like, just just do everything you can. So when you go to bed, you're fucking exhausted, and you're like, hey, hey, I gave it my shot. You know. Yeah, and then the other thing too is like it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. It We're doesn't all matter. gonna die. Even if you don't try your hardest, if you don't try your hardest, you probably didn't want what you thought you wanted. That's a good if point. The idea of trying crazy hard on something you're pursuing occurs to you, and then you don't do it. Yeah, you didn't ever you want. Didn't, it wasn't. For it wasn't you. important to you to do that. Yeah, the yeah, shit yeah. that I think is important, I fucking do that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I do everything I feel I'm supposed to do, right. and then I entertain the possibility of doing things that I might be supposed to do. Right, and then you find out. And you find out. You find out. Yeah. So, um, in high school, you're, you're you're doing basketball. You're doing football. Um, do you have any like stories that stick with you to this day, like? Um, cause you were a jokey, jokey, joke guy. Like, did you, yeah. did you, is there any time that you were like, Oh, I fucking crushed, man. I crushed in social studies. You know, like, yeah, well, I, it's gotta be God, one moment. Dude, so, I mean, so many, like, so, <laughs> so many, many I've crushed so many times. <laughs> Going I'll, I'll the say catalog. this, like I, I probably have never been as funny as I was in high school. Oh yeah. W one, it's like being funny at like a funeral or something, right? Like <laughs> it's, the, it's an inappropriate context yeah. to be hysterical. It is. Yeah. So yeah. Everything's amazing. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I mean, I used to love gym because we used to do this thing in, in PE where like everybody would take their station. Like everybody had an assigned seat on the gym floor yes, where you yes. sit and then yeah, yeah. do attendance and right. then you'd like stand up and stretch or whatever yes, it was. Yes. And like, because we were sitting on the ground, I would just do like physical, ridiculous antics, like roll around, whatever, and yeah. like act like a dinosaur, shit like that. <laughs> uh, but I do, I don't know if this is really, I mean, I don't know if I was the funny one in this situation, yeah. but this was like formative to me. Like, I think it was my junior year. I was like pretty confident I wanted to quit lacrosse. Um, and I had simultaneously an AP art class that I needed to finish, um, like a huge canvas painting. For, a Van Gogh. I hadn't even started. Yeah. I wish. Um, <laughs> so I had to just practically, I couldn't go to practice if I was going to finish this painting because it was due the next day or whatever it was. Right. So I went to my, <laughs> I went to my lacrosse coach at the time and I was like, Hey, like I am going to fail this class if I don't turn in this painting. And so <laughs> to lacrosse I, coach. <laughs> I have to like go paint right now. <laughs> and so the, the rest of the team is around and they're all looking at me and he goes, <laughs> He goes, uh, he goes, so you're telling me you want to be, uh, you're telling me you want to, you're telling, you're telling me you want to be, uh, and he starts to like get frustrated with himself. Yeah. And he goes, you're telling me you want to be, what do, what do they call those, those fucking guys who paint? Yeah. And then one of my buddies on the team goes a painter and he goes you're telling me you want to be a painter <laughs> and i was like you did not just not know the word paint and yeah i think i think another word was, was like, coming to his head there was probably a few, things, <laughs> a few things but i was just i in that moment i was like oh you're not my people yeah you don't know the word painter dude yeah yeah like yeah. what just yeah. and here's the thing he's <laughs> not even the progenerator of this like machismo thing because right. i'm a lot that too like yeah. ultimately i'm a dude from new jersey grew up with brothers and played sports like that broish thing yeah. is in me yes but so is like this eternal comic book nerd and i in that moment i was like okay this isn't people who are so dumb that they don't know the word painter it's people who are choosing to like 
think anything besides what we're doing here in yeah. this high school lacrosse team that isn't good. Yeah. Everything else is stupid. Pins and I was and like, sticks, bro. Come on. All right. I was like, okay, per- thank you for that. Yeah. I'm going to go be a painter. Yeah, that's such a good point, too, because I think there's a lot of people that are, I was one of those guys, conflicted with, like, I want to be the bro, be the yeah. cool guy, but I also like theater, and I want to I want to do my, write jokes, and and it's like, there is the, those moments where you kind of, like, and it goes both ways, where, like, you are with the bros, and mm-hmm. you, you, you'll you be talking about, oh, man, you know, I kind of want to take an acting class, you go, Puh! what are you, gay? You're just like, ah, oh, fuck, Dude, I, I, was I at hate a... you, kind of, but I, the, yeah. on the opposite side, you go in the theater thing, and you, you kind of... You have that moment where you're like, oh, let's do the theater thing. And they're like, let's rehearse lines. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, you feel like, mm-hmm. like oh, these right, are the people. Right. Like, I've been with the bros thinking they're going to, but they can't give me that satisfaction. You and, know? And, and, and nothing is the same. Because here's the thing. Like, people are complex, right? And, like, yeah. your yourself and your interests are, like, factioned. I was at Denver Fan Expo, the Comic-Con. Okay. And uh, I loved everybody I was spending the weekend with. Yeah. Um, and I met my friends, friends. And after a little while, I was like, I kind of need some of my people's energy, which is like people who, if I spend three days in a row with them, I'm like, I need to go hang out with some comic book nerd. You know yes. What I mean? like, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're trying to like satisfy all these different versions of yourself to keep yourself feeling like safe. And, and like yeah. good. And that might be the problem with just being one of those com- complex people that are like, I like quote unquote, uh, guy things like sports and shit, but I also like artsy things. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a, I think most people are kind of like, oh, I'm all arts. Every and then uh, the, you know the, the the dudes are like, oh, I'm all fucking, bleh, you know. Yeah, it's funny because it's yeah. all it's all like, you know, people not receiving something in the right context. Because if you take if you talk to a bunch of like jocks or whatever about like, oh, you're like, oh, I was watching this. Um, anime or i was reading this comic book they, they might be like that's so stupid yeah bro. you like that but then you you talk to them you reference like batman or goku in a specific context yeah yeah and yeah. they're like yo that shit is awesome you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah yeah everybody just needs to rec- you could get anybody in the world to be a fan of comics yeah. one because comics is a form yeah not a content yeah but if you pick the right story yeah and the right visuals it will appeal to yeah the dude the the, the hardest motherfucker on earth probably has a Batman tattoo. Batman is probably a, yeah. Batman is a comic book character who right. runs around in his underwear dressed like a bat. Like right. it's inherently stupid. Right, and, right, right. And it's a fairy tale right. basically. It's a fairy tale. And and the in the in the you know, to really make things kinda like black and white and take the taste out of things. Like all these things from like Batman to like Princess Diaries to um stand up comedy specials to paintings like they're all kind of based of like these old school high art, not hierarchies. Um, these uh, like kind of like hero stories, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like oh, this guy person's gonna overcome the the bad guy and oh, the like, struggle. It's like it's all the same shit, you know. So I mean, I'm like, sports too, like it's the same thing. Th- I'll say this: like I'm not a sports fan in terms of like you know watching regular games and following seasons or teams, uh-huh. but. There's always a handful of like sport events every year that by way of like my brother or something, I'll get the the sort of back issues, so yeah. to speak. I'll get the gist of like what the story is. Yeah, the Especially story. With boxing. Yes, like, yes. That one's so easy, right? Because you yeah. go like, oh, he's won this many fights and he lost this many fights and that guy beat him once and now. Like, right, right, wh- right. I can get really attached to the yes. like, narrative of competition. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you like my family is big Lakers fans and I fucking Kobe Bryant is like one of the most important figures to me Yeah, just because of the, he's a real life superhero. Yeah. He is. Like it's very clear what his antagonists are and he just defeated them all throughout. Nothing would stop him. And like very few people live their life that way Yeah, in the sports world. Every single athlete is an opportunity for someone to like try to be the hero of their own narrative, and like yeah. that's fucking cool. Yeah, so I you know I dig it for that. As, I mean, it, 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 there's no story behind the sport. No one gives a shit about the sports. That's why the playoffs are like, oh my god, they, elimination. They, they, dude, there's no yeah. better proof than that they do it again next year. Yeah, yeah. So like, right? Let's restart the whole story. Yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. Even like when like during like baseball is a long season, right? Right. What pot and like if you're a real fan, you there are storylines like, oh, this guy's struggling, or this guy trying to break the home run record or you know this guy's you know being wants to be traded like there's just little storylines all the time Dude, that you're the, fucking kind of going through that's the biggest thing like here's here's why you know uh 
narrative matters in sports mm. more than anything is because sometimes there'll be a boxing match and they'll go, wasn't it a good fight? Why? They went 15 rounds. They beat the shit out of each other. These men are now injured for yeah. months. Yeah. And they go, wasn't it life, a, wasn't yeah. a good fight. Why? Like, yeah. yeah, just the way that it went down, they yeah. didn't hurt each other enough at the right moments right, to right, make right. it satisfying. Like, that's crazy. But yeah. it just goes to show you that, like, what happened is and how it happened is more important yeah. than, like, that it's happening. Yeah. Even, like, the, that's one of the things with, like, the the NBA and the base and like at least game seven, like seven, best, it's like when it goes to game se- best of all time, best yeah. of all, all the best series playoff series ever game seven, game seven, game. if you sweep someone in a way, that's amazing. That means you just completely dominated right. one person. Right. Like that's, that should be celebrated, but no one, gives, you know, no one, well, no dude, one gives a shit. I was actually thinking about the game seven thing because yeah. it is a number. That's the, that's the most interesting number seven. you can pick for games that they have to play. Very random. Yeah. If it's if well one there's like there's numerical versions of that that don't work right but with seven it's like you have the chance to be a loser and a winner yeah multiple times before you get to the final game yeah and that's like keeps it exciting yes 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 well it builds that narrative you know yeah like you win three games in a row still doesn't matter still doesn't matter well and the best is when you're down 3-0 and then you go you win four in a row everyone's Mm -hmm. fucking whoa cinderella story whoa yeah i mean it's probably damaging to the psychology of athletes who are like okay we lost three games we have to win the next one. And if we do, that's almost worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah. Cause now we got to win three more. I know they always say like, um, it's, 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 they just go, they just try to take it one game at a time, you know? Yeah. But I mean, that's so you, true dude? of stand up, right? Yeah. Like before one I go sh- up, I'm like, okay, you're here. Yeah. What does that mean? Be here in the moment like present these people. Yeah, yeah. In reality. Yeah. If you're thinking about, I mean, dude, sometimes I've had sets where it's like, um, I'm I'm looking forward to a future show, and then mm-hmm. I'll like throw a set. Or, like, oh, I'm gonna just do. I want to work on these specific bits because um, I'm trying to prepare for the next. And then like I just not in the moment. Eat shit. You forget yeah, like to be up there and say just say hi to people. Totally read the room. It's you like, know, um, results based thinking is the death of the actual practice. I there's a thing yes, we, we that's such a great. My house. What that's was great. it? Um, uh, if you. I think it basically the idea that like if you are thinking more about the product than the progress, mm-hmm. uh, you're gonna guarantee that the product isn't good because the the process of doing something is like more important than what you get from it because it's how you ensure right. it's worth something. And if you're just thinking about like okay, am I gonna book this part? I need to book this part. Right. You're distracted. And that's totally well, You're sticking up your mental space that you should, that's yeah, supposed to be for the actual performance. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So I always ask this question to end the podcast. If you can go back to high school and change anything, what would you change? Gosh. Someone build you a DeLorean to go back and, you know, fix something. Um, what would you, what would you that's do? a really good question. Well, I'm sure that I was you know mean to someone at some point and i that'd be Ooh. cool to take that back but you know what i don't nothing. think i've gone that before on the podcast i just you know what it is but partly because of like how i am on stage how like i can be perceived i'm just sure nothing jumps out at me but like i'm sure that like in an attempt to be funny i yeah. was hurtful i know that um, it's kind of a comedy, is in, in a way. Yeah, you take yeah. big risks, part of comedy, bite yeah. off more than you can chew. Sometimes you think you can handle a topic or a joke or whatever, and you're not the comedian who can pull that off yet. Yes. So yes. that's a thing. Because also, I I had like so many experiences with people that like were damaging to me or like shaped my thinking about myself and like. I think for the most part, I was a really good friend to all my friends, but like, mm. you know, I was a fucking firecracker. I'd walk into other people's classes and just do bits. That's like, funny. It was, I was like a walking comedian who would just show up at someone's class and just crowd work. Like, yeah. That's dangerous. It's always weird when, when someone's just random, that's not in the class, walks in the class. Uh, Everyone kind of looks like, what the fuck is this imposter it's doing? Like, <laughs> I used to open the door on other teachers' classes yeah. and then hit on them. Yeah. That's that's hilarious. Insane behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, I don't know something like that, or also um, just 
probably what I wore every single day. Everything was like a different attempt to like be the coolest kid in school. Were you, were you, were you going after your brother's attire or was it just? Yeah, I had a lot of hand me downs. So there was, uh, you know, like Abercrombie and Fitch <laughs> shirts that like didn't fit me and like right. his football jerseys and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Good. So you're, you're, it was, every day was it, you, you weren't preppy or you weren't, you were just whatever the fuck is, is the wind, the, where were the winds blowing today? Yeah, man. Yeah, I was that way. I went through like four different fads. Just every year, there was a different. Yeah, just like looking <sighs> so cringe to think about. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you know, I just dress like uh, whatever's comfortable. You oh, know, I, even I, though I mean, yeah. have my fashion taste for sure, but it's never based on like what's everyone else doing. Yeah, you know? I I often will wear what I think looks cool, but in the confines of what I'm comfortable in physically. Yeah, yeah. my girlfriend's yes. the same way. Like yeah. she's like, I don't care. Um. I feel good in this. Like I'm comfortable in this. I'm going through a phase now where I'm like, I like baggier shirts because sometimes mm-hmm. with like the, the tight shirts, it's like they cut up here and then I'm on stage. It, it gets a little Dude, weird. If I'm yeah, tight, I can handle a little tightness up here, but yeah. it has to be flowy because it changes yes, yes. the way Flo- I move. Yes, yes, down here for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It changes the way I move, and then I can't wear. I hate tight clothing now. Yeah. I like my legs to be tight for some reason, but my upper body yeah. can be loose. And you move around a lot on stage, so that's definitely more important. For me, it's just like I'm not that mo- – I don't move around, but it's just that – like I, I I don't need anything to distract me from just right. figuring out – Just totally. if, I'm, I'm thinking about the shirt's fucking weird. Like, it's just not good. Um, all right. So why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Um, yeah. Your Rizzle handle. My Rizzle handle. <laughs> uh, so it's it's at Mr. Nick Callis um, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So Instagram – I think besides Rizzle, Instagram is really the only app I have. I don't have a Twitter or a Facebook. So just God bless Mr. You. Nick Callis. Yeah. Hit yeah. Miss, Mr. Nick Callis and um, go follow him on Instagram. Go follow thank Rizzle. You, you. I might be getting on Rizzle now. Um, Let's do it. So follow me there. I'll probably try to make my username Kamach Bro like the other ones. Um, this weekend, I'll be, uh, if you're in LA, come see me at Comedy Boulevard on Saturday, July. 23rd 7 p.m we have to sell tickets or i'm gonna embarrass myself um so please come out um i'll have some fun friends on the show and uh the week after i'm gonna be at uh doing this weird gig in palm pa palm pa on the i think the thursday i want to say july 27th or fuck man i am not plugging my stuff properly um one second 28th Palm PA, and then 31st, Sunday, I'll be at Hartford Funny Bone. Go get tickets, jamescomacho.com, for all that stuff. Follow the podcast page. I'm just a kid podcast. Go follow Nick. He's hilarious. Um, hey. We're at the comic strip together. Um, yeah. He's, yeah, you got it. If you guys see us in the same lineup, it's it's always cool being on the lineup with you because, you, you know, sometimes uh, the lineups there are um, a little also old school. I so. appreciate when it's like – comedians not only of like my similar age or like how long I've been doing comedy but it makes the shows more fun because you're like the, I think from the audience perspective they're like oh these guys know each other there's like a bit of a yeah yeah familial thing here as yeah. opposed to just like these are eight random people that yeah we think are funny yeah yeah it's that and that's why I think comic strip is uh they, they're, they're keeping it old school so I think a lot of the clubs yeah. now they you know audition passed but like no one's got that like uh oh we started like we slept here right you know when we started out yeah performed for one person for years you know that's makes, what i did yeah you get a lot of like it's like seeing the director's cut of a comedy show because yeah. you get all these little moments in between even if it's just like me bringing up nico white or something like yeah that. there's yeah. all these little moments in between that are fun it yeah. loosens everybody up too to perform with your contemporaries yeah and then and the last time we were this last thing this is the last time we were there i remember you were on stage and you know whoever like eh, we were all in the back watching each other you know mm-hmm. a lot of because we all kind of want to see the progress and see right. kind of like the oh my god like it's happening you right. know and i think a lot of times most people get off the, and they just they go in the bar and hang out or they leave you know no one really gives a shit right. what the other person is doing up there yeah. so it was really cool to see Nico watching you right. laughing and like giving a fuck, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and that's, just, that's, that's beautiful. a good point, man. It's yeah. like when you're, when you're with the guys that you find funny, mm-hmm. you stick around. It's yeah. It's more fun. It is more fun. All right, guys. And go comic strip live. Um, go see them. Go show her Upper East Side. Uh, great club. All right, guys. Thank you. Peace.